Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today, you can probably tell us by looking at this box, we have an AliExpress gaming PC that is supposed to be ready to game out of the box. For $500, we bought something on AliExpress and it's a computer, as you can not really see right now. You'll see once we take the tape off or just open this box up. But before we talk about this PC, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Gotta pay the bills. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. Make sure you use code TB20 at checkout to get 20% off your purchase. And it's really easy to activate Windows. All you have to do is take that product key they send you, literally copy and paste it, click activate and boom, you have Windows 10 Pro activated, ready to go. Link in the description down below will link you to Windows 10, use TB20, save some money, activate Windows. Don't let friends use unactivated Windows. It's not good. Don't let it happen. Goodbye. So yes, we purchased this PC on AliExpress for $500. I initially bought another PC from AliExpress for around $500, but the uh, seller actually canceled on me because they didn't have a power supply that would be supported here in the US. Now this seller actually shipped the PC, which we are gonna make sure that the power supply is okay to be used on US power because there is a difference between U EU and US power where if we try to use one of the EU ones here, it could go boom. Well, not really, it might just like destroy some things in the system, make it not work. Or not, but we're gonna go and do our research. But yeah, let's just open this thing up and dive right into it. All right, so we're gonna do our best to kind of go around this um, this amazing tape job. Uh, you can always tell when you get something that's you know from China or Korea or something like that because they use this beautiful yellow tape that always smells kind of funky. You can kind of see the front of the box through the tape. I really think the tape has something to do with like waterproofing. <laughs> Why, I don't know, but that's my guess. So uh, this is supposed to be like a Hunt Key brand. Um, all in, not all in one, it's an all in one desktop. Uh, but it, we believe it as a Xeon and something like a 960. Mm -hmm. We don't know what all like name brand there's gonna be, what all not name brand is gonna be. I can see the Hunky logo on the front. It looks pretty promising. My God, this thing stinks. Stinks? It smells what weird. What does it smell like? Uh, like the tape, it's, it it's like chemical. Like, it's chemical. We do have a couple warning logos about like batteries. So I'm assuming they actually included the IO or sorry, not the IO, the freaking CMOS battery. Just something, oh my God, the phone's just like falling apart. Is it really? Yeah, I'm just like, piece just Is broke it gonna off. gonna be okay? Yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. Cause we don't even know if this computer arrived in one piece. The foam is definitely not. The, <laughs> what is why, happening? Why, how'd that happen? I don't know. <laughs> just kind of oh, slid up on no, you. No, actually, I don't know. Okay, well, there's that. Oh, yeah, okay. What's in the box? Let's see what we got in the box. It's really heavy. It, it feels it, soft, too. I don't like that. Okay. So oh, the graphics oh, the card, graphic? they ship separately. Oh gosh. Oh no. Oh gosh. What, what is this? What does it say? I think it's supposed to be a 960. Or I'm thinking wrong. Fun House GTX 964 gig. It's a Fun House? I mean, the outputs it are promising. has good outputs. There's no VGA. That's the most important part. It says VGA, it's pretty much guaranteed fake. I mean, it could be a real 964 gig. It might just be a Chinese brand we've never heard of before. Funhouse. Funhouse, I've never, you ever heard of it? No. I've never, never heard, heard of it. I've already seen that silver power supply. What brand is that power supply? Uh, you know, one step at a time, one step at a time. So I think they already tested it too with the graphics card in. Yeah. Got the they just uh, rear iodes purposes. punched out. Yeah, they just, they got scared. I don't know why. I mean, that's like the, I feel like one of the lightest GPUs you can ship. I would have just packed the inside, but you know what? Make the customer do more work. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get our side panel screws on. So we do have acrylic for the case. It does look like we actually have uh, five pre-installed 120 millimeter fans. I don't know if they're actually RGB, but they do have lighting of some kind. It looks like we have an LED switch on top. So that's promising. I think we might actually have some, Roy some real Roy GB fans. That motherboard's looking real familiar. This is looking like one of those Artimeter boards, except it might even be even less name brand than that. That power supply looks terrifying. The back is not giving me much hope that this is gonna work right. It does say 220 on it. Yeah. So that's definitely not good. That's not good. All right, 220 VAC, so that's, that's clearly, um, yeah, yeah. And, and 50 Hertz. So we should be on 120, 60. Um, so we'll need to look up if this can switch, but based on how it looks. It's gonna be like that, we'll probably, I don't wanna have to do it, but we, we might could, swap we the power We could swap supply. the power supply. Yeah. It's not the biggest deal. We actually have a Western Digital Green SSD. It's a 240 gig, mm -hmm. uh, which, I mean, honestly, I'd take an SSD green over, uh, or sorry, a Western Digital Green over like just a hard drive. Mm -hmm. The, I don't even know what they went sicko mode here. We have a USB three to two adapter because this is just an older case. Um, 
Let's see, we've got our audio port plugged in up here. We have USB 2, our front panel's plugged in. Looks like just one of the traditional like Xeon motherboards. Yeah, one stick of RAM. That's, oh that's a little bit painful. Let's see what size we got. It looks like we have a single 16 gig stick. <laughs> um, and this is DDR3, I assume? It's probably three. Yeah, I can't really tell. Do we know what Xeon's inner should be? It should actually... be the 2620 V. Two with V3, but you can pull it off. Yeah, we can say the thermal-based applicator. I mean, we might as well make sure this thing has the best chance to game. Because uh, this graphics card is already a little bit scary, but you know, who knows? This could just really Work. be a decent build, and uh, we won't know until we really try it. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the cable management's like just not even there. You can kind of <laughs> see in the back where they cable management didn't what? really attempt much. What even is cable management? This cooler is just like cray cray. It just doesn't feel right. <laughs> But we're gonna put up some good old Arctic MX-5 on this. Give it the best chance to shine. Give it some more FPSs. Is, oh my oh god, gosh, what? there's no is, thermal paste. It's been reapplied to you. See how we have two different shades. Oh my. I'm actually really glad we did this yeah, now. Yeah, that would have been just awful. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna grab one of our icy purple alcohol pads. Let's see what we got. Yeah. So, so you're thinking 2620, you said? Yeah, it was like a tw I think it's a 2620. It definitely is a full-size Xeon. I mean, I tell based on the size. Is it unlabeled? No, it's... No, it's there. It's just very faded. Yeah, it says E5 yeah. 2650L, which we'll have the specs on screen. Should be better than is. a 2620, yeah. right? I, I mean, think it's still probably just a 6-core 12 thread. Because but... it's a V... Yeah, it would be like V2, V3 if it had more cores usually. But yeah. at, at the least, though, we at least got this cooler off so we can give it a much better <laughs> chance at performing well because, yeah, that thermal paste application was not pretty. Yeah. It didn't even look like thermal paste. Placed. Placed. Thermal plaster. I'm putting this thermal placed in its place, baby. This this is not the right size. No. You can see the, the die compared to that, so yeah. It works. It says Fubos. But yeah, well, once Jackson's done with that, we're probably just gonna, well, we can kind of see what the cable management looks like. Um, we'll see if we can research his power supply at all, but I have a strong feeling this is gonna be something we're gonna have to swap out. Um, so if you are in the US and you're buying this, um, do keep in mind, you have to be very careful of this because you'll just sometimes kill your system if the uh, voltage and stuff doesn't add up right. Yeah, which this power supply, just because it's, it, you can tell that it probably has no protections on it. Um, I doubt that it actually has switching built in to go back and forth between the frequencies. So, Pretty low wattage, so it's only, was it 400 watts? For 380, it's 384 watt. Yeah, so there's that. Um, you know what, what do we got here? <laughs> I think we got some marble bronze. We got some marble bronze, we got a marble bronze open. Uh, let's, I don't wanna go super crazy with the wattage here. Looks like 650 is our best bet. Yeah, sadly we have no power supplies in the back, so. Yeah, so here Still we go. waiting on our Ares game shipment. Yeah, Ares game, we're our power supplies, but yeah, we're gonna swap in the marble brawn just to be safe, cause I don't even wanna take a chance. Yeah, no, I, I honestly, it's not just the PC I'm worried about. It. I'd be worried that like, you know, we do something kind of crazy with our uh, building. Yeah. And that's the last thing we want is to burn we the We need to protect down. our office. All right, be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this AliExpress PC all booted up with the right power supply working, it did not explode, and ready to play some games, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now, we side test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Forza Horizon 4, Apex Legends, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Fortnite, and also we did a Cinebench R20 run to just, well, reassure the point I'm about to make in this benchmark section of the video. First up in Forza Horizon 4 on high settings at 1080p, we averaged 56 
6 FPS. Getting close to 60 FPS in Forza is actually pretty good. The 960 is able to stretch its legs a little bit, but it is starting to show the biggest problem in this system, the CPU. That E5 2650L, while be it, it is an 8-core 16-threaded processor, only boosts up to 2 GHz, which in modern PC gaming is just not going to cut it. These were originally server CPUs or just general like workstation CPUs that really needs cores over actual clock speed, and gaming is all about strong single-core performance. There's very few situations that really take advantage of more than just 4 or even 6 cores nowadays, so getting an 8-core 16-threaded processor that only boosts up to 2 gigahertz is really going to hold you back and that goes throughout the rest of the benchmarks that we actually did um, in apex legends at 1080p on medium settings we got about 60 fps it was okay it wasn't stuttery it was actually pretty smooth um, but we were gpu bound in this one benchmark the cpu running at 2 gigahertz didn't completely hold us back um, i would imagine if you were to use a 960 in apex with a better cpu you probably still see similar results because the 960 is well a older GPU that is not really great for newer games, but can play most games on low medium settings at 60 FPS. So nothing too out of the ordinary with the Apex Legends benchmark. But then next up in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we were actually really able to stress that GTX 960 at 1080p low settings, we averaged 48 FPS. Now, this whole benchmark run made me want to see exactly how bad this Xeon is, and we ran Cinebench R20 and ended up with a score of 1,443, which may seem like a decent score, but if you look at the comparison chart, it's just slightly better than a third gen i5. Therefore, even like a fourth gen i5 or anything from like a somewhat modern Optiplex will be better than this 8-core 16-threaded processor. And do keep in mind, this is a multi-core test we were testing the multi-core performance and it was just a little bit less than a quad core and this cpu is an eight core and 16 threaded cpu so the system builder would have been much better off getting something like the xeon e5 2620 which is a six core 12 threaded processor but it boosts up to 3.2 gigahertz without any sort of modification so i don't really know why they went with the xeon the only thing i can think of is they had access to these and they just figured we might as well make some gaming rigs out of it and market it as an eight core 16 threaded gaming pc but in reality a lesser core count cpu like the e5 would just be way way better um, than this well pitiful xeon that's eight cores and 16 threads it's not great for gaming um and last but certainly not least because you know a cheap pc everyone wants to see it run fortnite on pro settings which we actually didn't use performance mode because performance mode with anything that's low clock speed or uh low ram or anything like that just causes a lot of stutters i know it's backwards it just baffles me um, we ended up getting well 60 to 100 fps on average but there were a lot of stutters here and there and the settings we did use was just epic view distance everything else on low on dx11 and recap I really don't think we recommend this PC, um, considering you also have to swap out the power supply. There's no real reason for you to go through that effort when you can build a comparable PC or actually a better PC, even in this market, um, just using things like eBay. You could pick up a 960, you could pick up an i3-10100, um, and you could do a build for five, dollars $600, which will end up being the cost you'll pay for shipping to get this PC to your door on top of replacing that power supply that just does not work in the United States. So one, I think it was pretty bad that this company actually shipped this to the US without even considering the fact that it could be a problem. I did see like stickers all over the box that looked like it was warnings for the different like voltage conversion, but it was in a different language. So if anyone picked this up here in the US and they just were like, oh, you know what? It's probably fine, would have a lot of problems with their PC and it would be really, really bad. So not a huge fan of this PC. Glad we changed the power supply out though. And I was glad I was actually able to buy this thing and make a very interesting video for you. You guys so how we're gonna bring jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick okay guys so we just benchmarked some pretty basic games in this pc and honestly the verdict is not bad for the price but that xeon really holds the system back it is an eight core 16 threaded processor but the clock speed of two gigahertz well really does hold it back in pretty much any game that is cpu demanding so for the most part you probably want to opt if you can for like a 2620 like v2 or v3 because the clock speed on that is definitely higher even though it has less cores it'd be much better for gaming so if the company who made this is watching a lower well 
in CPU kind of lower end with a higher clock speed would be better for gaming in general. But for the most part, it showed up in one piece. We had one issue where the GPU fan is just kind of making weird noises, which is probably just like a transit issue uh, or something happened to the fan. That's something that you could get resolved yourself if you did get this PC. But for the most part, it's an interesting experiment. But if you guys want to happen to buy this PC, once again, remember the power supply issue. If you're buying this in the US, you make sure you don't get use the power supply it came with. So uh, link down below. We'll leave a link to the uh, listing over here and some other pre-built PCs that you can buy from Aliexpress. And so this just goes to show that more cores and more threads do not equal better gaming experience because honestly, the Xeon would probably perform worse than something like a Ryzen 1200, which is just a four core, four thread, first gen Ryzen. They were pretty subpar, but they had a higher clock speed, stronger individual cores. And that's why we always tell people, hey, something like an i3-10100 is going to outperform something like a seven gen i7, even though it is a i7 versus an i3, you have really strong cores versus, you know, a lot of cores and a lot of threads, but it's not the strongest. So as always, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you check out our other YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros and do not forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one goodbye and speaking of that twitch.tv slash toasty bros we actually build pcs like not like this actually not this one better ones we build better ones that don't have xeons but we usually build two per morning on twitch it's pretty crazy so if you like watching us build pcs on youtube watch us do it live and then talk about random things so what was the discussion for today it probably was, food probably food it was something weird we also talked about but go to the twitch streams see you guys later goodbye you know it's funny it was actually the buddy which led to food yeah exactly <laughs>